Long before anyone thought of pulling on a pair of spandex shorts and hitting the gym, hundreds of ordinary citizens volunteered to be part of a research project that changed our understanding of how to live a longer and healthier life. Seventy years later, the Framingham Heart Study is still underway, and as Stephanie Lydon tells us, at a time of rapid medical advancement, the study's most important asset are the children and grandchildren of those original volunteers. Grampy. Grampy. PD. Yeah. Photos help Peter Amati and his kids connect to past generations. But another part of their family history is preserved here, inside the Framingham Heart Study. This houses the medical and the clinical records of our participants. Three generations of the Amati family's medical records are among the 15,000 housed in this room. The oldest dates back to 1948, when President Truman signed legislation to fund research into that most vital of organs, the heart. People in this country were having heart attacks and strokes, but the reasons weren't clear. Framingham Heart Study Director Vasan Ramachandran says back then it wasn't clear if smoking or even high blood pressure was healthy or harmful. In little more than a decade, the original volunteers of the Framingham Heart Study yielded game-changing information about what causes heart disease and stroke. High blood pressure, smoking, high cholesterol. Researchers chose Framingham for the study largely because its residents were a lot like the rest of the country, part of an emerging middle class. My dad came over on a boat from Italy. Uh, he went to the seventh grade. My mom was a farmer's daughter. She went to the fourth grade. Amadi's parents were among the first to enroll. Every so many years, they would be called in, and, and they were proud of it. And like so many other families with Framingham roots, Amadi and his children have followed in that first generation's footsteps. They, too, are heart study volunteers. So I have a blood pressure kit that I take weekly, and I wear a, um, a smartwatch. So they're monitoring my exercising and my heart rate every day. And there's a benefit. Every couple of years, they undergo a barrage of rigorous medical tests. So there's always the potential of finding something you might not have found, you know, out, some medical issue by going through the program itself. This is one of our freezer rooms. In return, researchers get this. Blood and other biosamples from generations of families like the Amadis. There are more than a million of them stored here. And we know exactly which biosample is belongs to which participant. Long before there was a map of the human genome, researchers here found evidence that heart disease runs in families, and there are ways to cut the risk. Today, research goes well beyond the heart. So almost every part of the body that could be imaged, measured, or tested Framingham has done that. The next phase of the Framingham Heart Study will focus on aging, why and when disease of all kinds strikes, and what we can do to cut the risk. The answers may be here in generations of medical records. Grandma lived to be 95, Wadey was about in her 90s. And within the DNA of families like this one. Long-term studies like this, that's what you need. Human beings are only here for so long. But by giving a bit of themselves to science, this family has created a lasting legacy. It's quite a photo. Stephanie Lydon, WGBH News. Study researchers are also tackling the urban-rural divide. Researchers are launching a project in a handful of southern states to try to better understand why people living in rural areas tend to have far more health problems than those who live closer to cities.